<laughs> That's when you know it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> when the Canadian Army doesn't want it? Well, they, yeah. they made them, but, in, but you know, they weren't really too marketable. And how many people want one of those things? But it's amphibious. No, that's another personal watercraft. I mean, you can look up clouds. You can look up. Uh, it's got like, see, it's got like handlebars. It's a, it's a little, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that seats from a classy, even, uh. Yeah, uh, all you gotta do is go, go, go get the screamers for a bicycle. Yeah, that's for sale, too. I do too, but... They've been off the rim so long, I don't know if they yeah. It's just so, so far off, off the beam, yeah. Right there at the front. Oh. I had a couple of you know, muscle cars. They were fun, but all I found was they were fun for a few minutes to go to the line. I want to make sure I just don't pop off that jack. Yeah, well, because it'll stop. So you've got a trailer hitch and everything. I can move that right now. The front tire's still here. Yeah. That's the rudder, by the way. Stop right there. And the back one's the propul propulsion. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of lenses. These are common little fog, cheap fog lights. They look like uh, VW. Jason reverse Rudy. lights. VW reverse, VW reverse lights. The lenses are down in there. What country was it made from? Canada. Um, do you want me to pull my truck sure, you around? Can. Let's see how that works for us. You might just have to rock and roll it. I'm gonna push the ramps, unfortunately. Try to get near that cable. Oh, there you go. That ain't good. You can throw your body in front of it to stop it? <laughs> yeah, since it doesn't roll. <laughs> you can steer. I can do that if you want. It's going uh, pretty good though. It's 
Yeah, yeah. Pa, may we get in the truck? Sure. Yeah, we're going to get the stuff out of the way first. Yeah, there's a, there was, I don't know if it's still there, there was a website, and there's, a, there's another one. We're going to go towards you as far as we can. Okay. This side. Just pretend that's the water line and you're good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> it may list a little this way. <laughs> I, I think you have to ride and sit in the middle, maybe in the water. I think you look good in there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty good in here. <laughs> Hi, Lily! That was easy. So you got a brake pedal. I don't know. I'm just just thinking e brake. I'm kind of wondering if it would have a, a steering brake to help it in the water, make it turn one direction more or the other. That's going to be throttle and steering. I bet you you could take that apart right there and flip it over and steer on this side too and just unbolt this and flip it around. The uh, wood was just rotted out, so the mounting plate just ripped out of it. it didn't do anything to the hull. It just took out the uh, the wood was gone. The backer and the all the way through. That was like right there. So the engine. So 
goes to a jack shaft. Power out. Jack shaft, a brick drum. That's the brake stand. And double roll of chain. Looks like an adjuster here. The bottom axle. I don't know if it's got a lock differential or not. But we're thinking the water. You'd want them both turning. But I wonder if it would affect how it would steer. The head is off of it. My battery's blinking. There we go. So, cylinder head is off. The piston, like the rod is seized. It moves some. The crank, the, the rod moves some, but it feels like. Not sure. So I say the bottom end probably went when they took it apart and they, they took the piston off and found out it was the bottom end and probably stopped on moving forward with fixing it. Because you know if it was the top it'd be easy. You'd do it right in there. It's not the crap out of anything, but it's gonna be pretty beat anyway. That's a little on the rough side. And we are missing the carb. The slide is there. I didn't see the carb. Here's the slide. I don't know what would have been on there. Engine. It's Italian. I don't know, I'll get you in there. Can anyone ID that? And are they available? Would I be able just to find another one of those? That is up there, like some kind of. I don't know what that is. Some will answer. Well, so where where to go? Would it be a pump or a bilge pump of some sort? Coil. That's a weird looking. Wow, that's a lot of crap for uh, the ignition. I wonder if it's um like spark proof. So that one is going. Any fumes that build up inside here don't, I don't know, like a boat would. It's a guess on my part. This would be a clutch, would it? And that's got a lever going to it. We'll stick with brake. And how would you bump it in and out of gear? What would it use for oil? You're neutral. That's like it's got broken off pins. Yeah. So we probably, probably put a screwdriver in there and tried to rock it back and forth. I think the first thing is you gotta get air in these guys. Front's okay. I gotta get those back to hold air just so this thing can move around a little bit better. It's uh, like dragging around a bathtub, you know. But anyway, this is a, a scooter, kayak, canoe, mini bike, go kart, three wheeler, four wheeler, <laughs> amphibious boat. Named Beaver. Just saying. I wonder if that stuff is so snazzy. If for reverse, the engine runs backwards, you shut it down and it starts up in reverse, and then that's how it backs up if it has a reverse. So that might make more sense. And maybe there's a like a CVT kind of clutch inside here.
stem out of it. That's your suspension too. Hey guys, how's it going? Not quite sure where I left off on this video. I did a bunch of filming earlier, so if this doesn't seem very uh, cohesive to where it's flowing, it's because it's like 12 days later. So I've done some homework on this and got a little bit of education what we have and what it is. So with that, I'll get you caught up and then we'll maybe get into it a little bit. It is a beaver amphibious vehicle. The predecessor to the beaver was the pelican pelican looked something like that but the two wheels were outbound they were not close together in the center like that but generally the same kind of look same drivetrain same uh, everything tires so uh it's drivetrain is 196 cc villers engine it's a european engine popular i guess with the bikes over there uh pelican was i think up to 67 i think it was like 63 to 67 and then 67 to 70 the beaver came out um it's hard to say with a straight face the engines are 196 cc it's a four speed motorcycle engine that the center is the shifter on emergency brake that's the shifter that's the clutch you kind of it's a uh, one up three down i think it's one up and then go to neutral and then three down is the setup on it again throttle and uh, steering and brake the forward and reverse is the key you crank it one direction it will start it in forward go back to neutral it'll shut off crank it back the other direction it starts the engine in reverse and allows it to back up four speeds reverse that is why it's too dark but that's why that coil setup was so intricate is because it has to bump the timing from one side to the other uh, we need to look into what is up with that engine it's missing uh, the carb we have the cylinder head we have the piston we are missing a um, venting system that kind of blew up across the jug that is not there and I think there's a cover that goes over this electrical system over here so we need to do an assessment and we need to get it out of there. I made it so it rolls, took the chain off. Oh, I loosened up the jack shaft. I was able to get it free enough where I was able to get the pin out of the chain. I dropped the chain. So now that at least the system can roll. That's the brakes. I may have gone over that before. Shifter is on the side and the clutch lever runs to a cable and just runs a regular clutch kind of set up. It looks like, looks like we're gonna need to get some light in here. I think it just kind of butts up against this housing right here and this housing goes up under the wheel well and i believe it 
draws air in from there, blows up across the engine, and then the air can just exit. There's the hood, the hood that comes over here, and so this back section is open and just part lets it uh, lead right out of there. I don't think it's attached to there, I think it just has foam kind of holding it. We need to get this whole harness out of the way and unwired and get it unbolted. I see one bolt there, I'm sure there'll be one bolt there, probably two in the front. So that's going to be our project. We're going to see if we get this thing out of there and then see if how bad the uh, crank assembly is, whether the bottom end of the engine is okay or did this thing go underwater that filled up and uh, is totally crapped out. So, other thing that could happen too is this because it's a bowl, you know, it's meant to float, water can't leak out of it. So, even if it got rainwater or something in there, allowed it to fill up so much, also could have done damage to it. But we'll see. So, I started uh, labeling wires and start pulling wires apart. But I think what I want to do before that, now it's locked up, it doesn't turn, it's not going to turn. But I think I want to put a battery on it and I just want to bump the key forward and bump the key reverse and see if that system is working just so that if something's wrong, if it was working now and it's not working later, then I know I screwed something up. But if not, then I already know I had a pre-existing problem and not chase something that I caused. So let's go get that done quick. Stuck in the chuck, we're not gonna be able to move that. And then is our hot. Let's turn the battery pack on, see what happens. I think so. I'm gonna go see what the other buttons do, right? Nothing. That should be the lights. No bulbs in those, so I don't think they're gonna do anything. So I went for the path of least resistance. This is that whole setup that was down there, and I just kind of marked every single one of them where it went, but pretty much in order as long as that clip stays on there. And down on the piece of paper is there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G kind of thing. Uh, some grounds labeled them. We got two wires here. We got number one. We got to call that one number two These do not want to pull apart. I'm gonna slice the jacket off of one of them see if I can get it apart it might be just corroded or, or Maybe they don't even come apart Maybe it's a crimp. I don't know But uh, I'm gonna go get that apart. The yellow wire is solid from there going all the way up So I'm actually gonna cut that one. That should be self-explanatory to put it back together uh, And then we think we should get the jack shaft out of the way so that we can get access to the, well, the uh, bolts on the bottom. I got some of the hardware off of here. The brake lever is off. The shifter is off. Clutch cable is out of the way. I'm trying to get this jack shaft out of the way. It has this con rod back in here, but it looks like a little bit of a bitch to try to adjust that. I don't know if this guy just slides off the end or will it, I don't know what's going to do, but let's see. Can get any kind of the tensioner bolt is holding it from the bottom. I have to run that all the way out to get it off of there. Hmm. Let's see. What do we want to do? Can I slip it? No. I was hoping the bottom was. There's a bolt going this way on the bottom that's the adjuster it cranks it in and out and i was hoping it was slotted lift it up off of there but it's not and i don't see a way to get it out of there unless you take the whole thing out and if you do that it's going to make this chain tighter so it has this has to come off first but even if we back that con rod off i don't see that allowing us to get the chain out we gotta get this kind of to the side. I'll figure it out. Let me see you guys figure it out for me. Well, as you can imagine, those two weren't back. The two front engine bolts weren't too bad. And the back two, you can't even see them. You can feel them back there. 
but I thought they were kind of like cast into the floor. So the first one came, the nut came off. The second one, it just started spinning. I tried the back two, they both started spinning. But then I took a look underneath. And they actually do hang out down below. They bolt right up through. So got vice grips on it, but of course they want to just go spin around and around. So we have a lift stopping the vice grips from spinning so that I can grab the other end. I'd ask one of you guys to help, but you know, that that's gonna work. Let's get that uh, last one out and see if it has any wiggle room. It's a little tight for us all to fit in there, but the exhaust does not come out. Not yet. You can split the pipe over here, but I have a feeling once the engine is out, you have enough wiggle room to get it out. And I'd rather take that apart out on the bench instead of trying to, you know, press and cut and stuff inside here. Uh, let's give it a little tug. Let's see if it'll move. <laughs> I don't know if those other four are bolted. I sure hope not. Yep, they are. Oh, are they gonna suck to get to? Suck, I tell you. We're moving slow, but I think we're making progress. I just got the. I backed off the Conrad on that side, the bolts out of it. I took the uh, adjusting bolt nut off of it. Hopefully, we'll be able to turn that enough. I can get that chain off. It'd be fun to get it back on there too. Yay! Hey, working on it some more. I'm thinking what it actually is. The there is a cradle that is bolted to the floor with eight bolts, and there's no way that they put them in there with the engine in the way. So again, I think it's a cradle. This guy, I was looking at. Well, how would you get that guy out? It's got you know, a nut on each end of it. How would you remove that? But I think you might be able to run it a hole right there and give it enough to come out of the way and then there's another one right here I'm not sure if that's the only two I'm gonna loosen up that front one and we'll see if we get some rock out of the anchor this one's already loose if that's the case that's what it is and uh, it'll make life a lot easier but I gotta do some uh, it's getting dark I gotta move uh, some trailers around first yeah, I think we're locked and loaded well, we're loaded anyway and it's one of the virtues of having a trailer hitch. Let me see if I need four-wheel drive. Break it free from its little sinky holes. There it goes. So having a trailer hitch on the front, not so much in backing up, but going forward, it really helps steer the trailer exactly where you want it. Tight through here. This trailer needs to be emptied because I need it. Some repairs to do on the house. Oh, some cleaning up to do on the house. Which I need air in the tires of the trailer. the idea I am gonna focus on what I'm doing without smashing in anything I think we got it yeah I might want to put a layer in that all right so I took that front bolt out and that's a good sign it means we are definitely on the right approach. Uh, this guy I gotta figure out, probably gonna wanna clean these threads up. It looks like it has a screwdriver slot on the tip, but without getting this cover off, I don't see 
how you would get a screwdriver in there to hold that and I'm hoping that that can travel far enough in there to come off the bracket who knows this cover this cover might come off simply too I don't see how it's how it's on there but it might be just one Let me work on getting that guy out of there. I don't know if you can see that, but that bolt had room to come right out the side of the case. Unfortunately, I had to grab it with vice grips on this side because this side was all gummed up. There's the slot, the screwdriver. Now that I know, I, yeah, I still wasn't going to get it because you can see how the, the, screwdriver, the um, vice grips were spinning. I wasn't going to be able to hold that back. I did clean it with a wire wheel before I tried backing the threads off, but it's still speed up. This guy... Might be ready to come out of there. Back up a little. Let's see. Let's tuck that harness around somewhere. And I don't know if I have everything, so we are going to go find out very shortly. Let's position ourselves. What was it? It was me getting ahead of myself. This is the bolt for the back. I took the nut off, but I never pulled the bolt out. <laughs> that needs to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're perfect. Let's go get that guy out of there. That might help. Why won't come out? And again. suck but doesn't fit out this hole yeah come on chain the engine's locked up so the chain doesn't won't slide off of it I, yeah why does saying hi yeah help you too it's exactly what it was there's a cradle is that is that look at that awesome carb that's cool I'm glad that part's found and that's where it sucked air and it's not without the uh, mandatory mouse nest now it's a good thing it came out of there anyway because this thing would have starved for air uh, choked to death well, you see anything else just a dirty yeah there's those bolts on the bottom I got that one those two in the back and then I was trying to get a wrench on these guys and I'm glad I didn't do that because the dry shaft goes through this anyway so that wasn't gonna happen those look like a couple like support bars or something but good we can clean all that up I might want to put a plate underneath it to help stiffen it it looks like like a boat they just have a piece of wood like in the transom seems like it moves around fairly easy though <laughs> the fact that it's missing some bolts doesn't help it's got a roof and nail. All right, guys. Well, I think we got more than enough on this video. At least we got to this point. I do want to jump in and get into doing the engine and finding out what happened to it. But I think we're going to just have to uh, put that on another video. Because for me, I'm done for tonight. I'm going to wrap it up and go get myself a bite to eat. But with that, I want to thank all you guys for hanging out with me. Having some fun in the garage. And uh, wrenching on weird stuff. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Later. All right, dump run. Old dead machinery is uh, leaving us. How much do you think it weighs? Not the dollar amount, just how much it weighs. Bunch of, bunch of blown up small engines, bunch of mower decks. Somebody screaming right now they need that. Well, you can go get it at the scrapyard if you like. But it's leaving here.
I'm gonna give my guess, I have no idea. I'm gonna give my guess to you. I'm gonna say 2150, 2150 pounds. Let's see what happens. That's it guys, she's all empty. And uh, make your guesses of the weight. I already know. But uh, on the next video, not this one, the next video, I will give you the answer to how much it weighed. Take your best shot.